really want to make it clear that, that there's a whole lot of what we call molecular breaks. And so molecular breaks are something that we termed for things that decrease our ability to increase our muscle mass. Evolutionarily, muscle is a very costly tissue. So if you're a big bulky person with a lot of muscle mass, you need more calories than if you're a small person. And one of the ways that we've made it so that we're better evolutionarily equipped, is we made it really hard to grow muscle, it takes lots of energy. So we put all these um, breaks in place molecularly. So we've got a whole lot of things that kind of slow our rate of growth so that we don't grow so big that if there is a, a famine, that we're going to be, you know, because we need so many calories, we're going we're gonna to completely lose that and we're going to lose all of this stored, you know, stored protein very quickly. So we, we, we've identified at least four different molecular breaks. AMP kinase is one. But if you take out AMP kinase, yes, if you take out one of the flavors of AMP kinase, muscle will grow bigger under, under a loading stress. But if you do other things, if you take out the main one that's activated by endurance exercise, it has very little effect on, on how big the muscle grows after exercise. There, there are things that we have identified, because I told you that loading bypasses the need for the insulin receptor and that first part of the growth factor pathway. Well, when we do a very chronic or really heavy, really fast growth stimulus, what happens is our body feeds back and it actually gets rid of one of the proteins that allows us to activate the growth factor activated um, pathway for mTOR complex one. And so you decrease this protein IRS1, which is important in insulin signaling. We do that every time we re do resistance exercise, we actually become a little bit insulin resistant for a short period of time. The more we do it, the bigger the stimulus, the longer and the more pronounced that is. And so that's another molecular break because then our food isn't activating our muscle protein synthetic response as well because it can't go in through the insulin pathway. So that's a second molecular break. We've identified a number of these different breaks throughout the body, throughout the muscle, that actually can contribute to this concurrent training effect. AMP kinase is one of them, but it's not the only one.